weirdo. You can imagine it, can't you? Back in middle school, classmate taunting you. Who's a weirdo? <clears throat> You're looking at one. I've always been a geeky word nerd. I can't get enough of word games. Word a day calendar? Oh yeah, I've got one. I am obsessed with weaving words together. And for years, I wrote poetry, hiding it in my diary. In my teens, I released some of my weirdness into the world, sharing a little poem I had written. At school, my words were met with a kind of withering teenage side eye that makes you want to melt. I did, all while wincing at snarky comments like, mm, somebody thinks she's Shakespeare. Ugh, the shame. Message received. I'm not normal. I felt ashamed that playing with words, exploring ideas, somehow made me a weirdo. But today, I think weird is marvelous. And I think it's why I've made Fargo home. There's no shortage of weirdness here. <laughs> I'm a community builder at heart. Why? Because we humans are social creatures. Introvert, extrovert, shy, or exuberant. We all need our peeps. It is belonging that makes us human. In our search for belonging, we so often crave approval, don't we? And so we hide our weirdness, those frizzy, off-kilter, bumpy parts of us. We think hiding will help us connect. We're terrified that if our quirks peek through the facade, we'll be cast aside. And no one wants to be on the outside, lonely, feeling so alone. Research, researchers describe the condition of loneliness as distress caused by a lack of satisfactory relationships. 46% of Americans say they sometimes or always feel lonely. 46% is a lot. And only one in four Americans feel like they belong in a group of friends. The US health corporation, Cigna, created a loneliness index. And it shows us that Gen Z is the loneliest of all. More than half of people under 25 identified with 10 out of 11 feelings associated with loneliness. Feelings like, no one truly knows me, and I can't connect with other people. Loneliness is pervasive. When we're lonely, we're missing our weirdos. For me, and maybe for some of you, loneliness feels like I am trapped under a cold, heavy, wet blanket, covering me from head to toe, making me motionless. I am so desperate to escape this cold feeling that I go on a connection rampage. I start a texting spree, firing off dozens of messages, hoping someone will respond and save me. Can we cure loneliness by owning our insecurities, our weirdness? What if weirdness is actually our social superpower? Digging into the etymology of the word weird we find that its origins are not about being odd, strange, and bizarre. Instead, its Old English roots describe it as fate and destiny. Let's think of weird in this way, not that our lives are beyond our control, but rather fate is all of the decisions and actions that have brought us to where we are today, make us who we are. And destiny is not predetermined, it's our future decisions and actions that shape who we become. Put all of this together and we can see weird as extraordinary, as powerful. Weird makes me who I am. It allows me to be utterly myself. For instance, instead of celebrities, I will fangirl so hard over a PhD researcher whose work I admire. Exhibit A. I will admit, I became totally enthralled with this woman after hearing her at a conference. She's an expert on Gen Z. Then I watched her videos and bought all of her books. Seriously, I achieved superfan status. And I wasn't afraid to show it. At work, I started a book club, inviting people all across my campus to read and discuss her latest book with me. And this fall, thanks in part to my weirdness, 
Corey is coming to speak on our campus. Ha! Ah, be still, my fangirling heart. So you see, embracing my weirdness, my quirky self, helps pave the way for me to contribute uniquely in my community, to bring people together, to enhance belonging, and just maybe find a cure for loneliness. Owning our weirdness, embracing our weirdness, is our challenge. And it's also about finding joy and doing the things that bring us joy. Another example, little Annie <laughs> wanted to be a ballerina. And when you're five, any dance is super cute. Fast forward like 10 years, and it turns out I've got no rhythm. But do I let that stop me? <laughs> oh no. I'll always shimmy and shake it on the dance floor. I've got some signature moves, and they're goofy, but who cares? I love dancing, so I do. It's who I am. Doing what brings us joy is the first step in finding belonging. And owning our weirdness is a step toward our destiny, toward connecting with others, because we're no longer thinking we're outsiders. So we need to shift the way we think about weirdness. No more finger pointing and, hey, look at that weirdo. Instead, find joy and humor in each other. Can we all just high five our fellow wackos? At the end of the day, community is not a thing. It is an energy. It's connection. It radiates. You can feel it. A few years ago, friends and I hosted a Fargo prom. We invited everyone to join us for a night of dancing and getting fancy. Prom night arrived, and so did our guests. Dressed up in everything, from classic prom dresses and tuxes to vintage suits, poofy 80s dresses, bedazzled denim jumpers, and, vin and traditional outfits from other countries. People showed up at prom as themselves. No apologies or dressing to please the crowd. It was magical and authentic. That night on the dance floor, there were no outsiders. We all freaking belonged. Too often we think of community in this really big sense. The public art, the good schools, the great new restaurants, the things that are other people's jobs. But community building is not a checklist of things to have in our neighborhood. It's not drawing a circle so you can say, I'm in and you're out. Community is actually the energy of love and acceptance when we work toward a common goal together. So in my work, I've discovered something I need to confess. As a community builder, I can't actually build community. It's not about me, Annie. It requires all of us to want to find belonging. So through my work on campus and in Fargo, I've discovered three ways for us to lav, L-A-V, our own communities. L, listen to the positive. Ask people what they're excited about and rally them around that. Negativity can't sustain community. So instead, listen to the positively kookiest, zaniest ideas. A, ask for contribution. No one wants to be the charity case or the token invite. Reciprocity is needed to feel like we're part of a community. Asking for contribution allows weirdness to shine. V, validate the weirdos. Help people see they have valuable gifts to offer and that weirdness is welcomed and celebrated. Validating people helps create belonging. So there you have it. If we can all learn to lav each other, to listen, ask, and validate each other, we can co-create the extraordinary, a much deeper belonging, a shared destiny. Yes, it's going to require vulnerability and patience and forgiveness, because there's no perfect community. We're just people, after all. But you know what? I L A V lav Fargo. Living here, I found the best kind of weirdos. And I'm convinced that weirdness is our superpower. Here in Fargo, we create space for the wild dreamers and quirky changemakers. 
We hold space for our creatives to be who they are so we can all offer our best selves to the world. In Fargo, we offer belonging in an array of shapes, sizes, and colors. People can let go of that fear of loneliness and rejection. Oh yeah, we're a community that champions, nurtures, and protects weirdness, protects ideas. And so, trust me, when we offer belonging to others, we will find our own belonging, our community. So it's not just okay to be weird. The world needs us to celebrate weird. So today, I invite you to go find your fellow weirdos. They're probably sitting right next to you. Thank you.